Alzheimer's disease currently affects over 5 million Americans, with approximately 700,000 dying with the disease in 2015. Barring any new breakthroughs in treatment, those numbers will increase by 40% in 10 years. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, which is another term for saying memory loss. The difference with Alzheimer's is that it is a neurological disorder that is progressively degenerative. So when somebody has it, it will get worse and worse to the point that it actually impacts your activities of daily living. Well beyond what we think of as normal brain function, it interferes with how you see things and perceive the world around you, your ability to do tasks like brushing your teeth or um, getting your clothes on correctly. So eventually that disease will be progressively degenerative and right now there isn't a cure. Mara Batonis is the author of When Caring Takes Courage, a definitive how-to resource for Alzheimer's caregivers and was honored with the Jefferson Awards Foundation Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Award recognizing her commitments for positive change. Far from this room, people that aren't dressed as nice as we are right now, there's 15 million of them providing unpaid care for persons with Alzheimer's and dementia. Over 5 million people living with Alzheimer's and dementia right now. And when you took a moment to recognize me, you said they're important to you. And I'm so glad they are because we need your help. Actually, my grandfather, who was a father figure to me for many years, developed the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's and eventually that's what he passed away from. He was a two-star general, a successful businessman, and we created the, the best possible days we could for him while he was living with the disease. We realized there was a need to be able to access information quickly. On the internet and throughout many really great books, there's all kinds of information, but when you're a primary caregiver to somebody with Alzheimer's and dementia, you're sleep deprived and really your whole day is spent making sure that that's per that person's needs are met. And as a result, you don't have a lot of extra time to do some research. Our book, When Caring Takes Courage, it's by and for caregivers. After 30 years in healthcare, it, I had the opportunity to work with nurses and neurologists and activity directors and aides all across the country that were demonstrating every single day that just because you had these symptoms or you had a diagnosis of Alzheimer's doesn't mean you can't live well with that. So the book was created to help caregivers, whether they be professional or family members, figure out how to meet their loved one's daily needs and still connect and make sure that there are moments that matter despite a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. The first half of the book is about getting through your day and the second half is creating the best possible day. We recognize that the book had to begin where caregivers are currently spending most of their day, which is necessarily on the tasks like bathing and dressing and grooming, medication management, doctor's appointments. We need to put some quick go-to tips to make those things easier. But really the heart and soul of the book is the second half, which is about how to connect with that person that may spend good parts of their day feeling lost to you and to the environment around them. And all the way throughout, it is very person-centered. We believe in a philosophy called biography-based care. And what it does is it helps caregivers connect with the person that they love based on what that person currently finds familiar. That changes at every stage in the disease process. Alzheimer's works by taking your most recent memories and then working its way backwards. So often if you're talking with somebody that has Alzheimer's or dementia, they may not remember if they ate today. They may not remember what they did yesterday, but they may be able to describe to you in beautiful detail the day they met their husband, or the song that was playing during their graduation, or their favorite movie, or especially memories about their mom. So those kinds of things are, are really wonderful ways to engage somebody with dementia at any stage in the disease process. And it, the biggest part of our second half of the book is all about creating those moments. So even little tips like not correcting somebody and instead validating them and finding ways to help them feel right when big parts of their day they feel lost and wrong. Those were new techniques sometimes for people at home. And one of the very biggest things that we needed to teach our caregivers is that just because this disease is terminal and there isn't a cure right now, we maybe can't change the destination, but we can sure improve the journey. So we need to work really hard to make sure that the days and hours we still have with our loved one are as best as they can possibly be.